So Gorgon or Leviathan, Kraken or Hydra, let's talk about choosing a high fleet for Tyranids in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where now with 10th edition Codex Tyranids out and about in the wild, I thought it was high time to revisit the subject of high fleets on the channel and make an updated version of pickier high fleets in 40k 10th edition. With 10th edition 40k, things definitely work a little bit differently to how they have in the past. Games Workshop's gone down a philosophy of having your paint scheme, law, and high fleet choice not actually reflect in the rules directly. I think that this does have its positives and negatives. While it might mean that any one high fleet might not necessarily have as much flavour and in-depth focus on itself, they still seem to have tried to realise a bunch of different Tyranid archetypes in the different detachments that you can choose. And there definitely is some advantage in not having certain rules tied to paint schemes. You can make a leviathan force that's themed around big monsters or unending swarms or anything else. I still think that choosing a high fleet can be really quite a cool decision though. There is some pretty awesome lore and backstory to each of them, plus their own colour schemes. And there certainly are more archetypical ways that they might make war. Quite a few of them I think are really quite directly well reflected in the different detachments in Codex Tyranids. Maybe having an unending swarm represent Hydra perhaps or Vanguard Onslaught represent the fast-moving and infiltrating Tyranids of Kraken. Ultimately though, they're certainly your models and you can do what you like. You can choose to paint them up as one of the major ones from 40k history, or are still extant in the galaxy. There's plenty of slightly lesser known ones that have log fragments but not full details, and you can absolutely make up your own one with your own splinter fleets with your lore and colour scheme. In this video though, I'll talk through maybe the seven major high fleets, a little bit about their lore and background, and preferred fighting style with units that they might use, and focus on perhaps the army archetype that best fits them in game. First up, and the first High Fleet that arrived in the galaxy with a bang was High Fleet Behemoth. Although there had been a few small incursions of Tyranids into the galaxy prior to this that hadn't drawn as much attention, this was the first time that they were realised as a true intergalactic threat. Worlds started to go dark on the eastern fringe, most notably the world of Tyran, where the High Fleet was first encountered and properly documented by the Imperium, the world stripped bare of all biomass for an all-consuming swarm of space horrors from beyond. High Fleet Behemoth certainly seemed to have no subtlety, an ultimate hammer blow that was just trying to destroy everything in its path, enormous High Fleets that packed all their might into one enormous punch, overwhelmed each world's defence in turn, stripped it bare of biomass, and then moved on to the next one. It vaguely seemed to be cutting a massive path through the stars towards Holy Terror, though encountered the realm of Ultramar on the way, devouring some outlying systems such as Prandium, Jagger, and Thandros, though was halted at the infamous Battle of Macrag by the Ultramarines, though at the cost of their entire first company, fighting to the death in the Polar Fortresses. In battle, the rather unsubtle Tyranids of High Fleet Behemoth are just known for their direct full frontal assault and ferocity, tending to favour melee close combat versus ranged attacks, with lots of Hormagorns and particularly Carnifexes in their ranks. Old One-Eye, the monstrous regenerating Carnifex that you can see here, was first encountered fighting Behemoth as well, a bioform that's been recycled by the hive mind several times since. In game, in the 10th edition Codex, I feel like if there's any one detachment that best fits Behemoth, then it's probably the Crusher Stampede. Feels like a good lore fit for them for a Nidzilla type army with their preference for Carnifexes. I'd say its stratagems do give some fairly reasonable support for monsters with things like re-rolling hits in close combat, and I do quite like their automatic death throws, which could be pretty powerful on something like a Norn Emissary throwing its way towards the foe. Though I would say that their core buff is maybe a little bit on the underpowered side, you have to actually take damage before you get any benefit whatsoever, so your opponent's kind of in control of that, and it only really gets very good with a plus one to wound if you're below half strength but not killed, something that's just very hard to rely on and will come up kind of randomly. Overall, I'd probably not rate the Crush Stampede as one of the stronger ones right now. It's perhaps a bit weird in that its rules maybe aren't all that strong, but Tyranid monsters really are quite good. There's a bunch of very efficient data sheets like Exocrines and Haraspexes and Maliceptors and things. Otherwise, maybe the Unending Swarm might not be the worst for Behemoth either. Tides of Hormagorn seem fairly good for their way that they do things, particularly as they get closer when they get shot. The next Tyranid High Fleet to hit the galaxy in force was High Fleet Kraken. The Imperium had reinforced the Eastern Fringe by this side and was ready for another wave of Tyranids to come in, suspecting more. But High Fleet Kraken decided to do things a bit differently to Behemoth, only attacking following a wave of unrest and rebellion on the Eastern Fringe, with many lurking Gene Stealer cults rising up against their masters on Imperial worlds throughout the sector. Kraken also decided to strike a lot more subtly and deceptively as well, operating as an entire swarm of minor tendrils with their own objectives, 
rather than just one hammer blow. As a result, it perhaps wreaked even more carnage than High Fleet Behemoth, with grave losses to chapters like the Lamenters and the Siders of the Emperor, and the prideful Eldar of Craftworld Iandin engaged one of the largest splinter fleets of the swarm and were all but destroyed, save for the last minute intervention of Prince Iriel and their army of ghost warriors to this day. Ultimately, Kraken was largely repelled under a big battle worn Bandamarius Kalgar once more at Ikar 4. The Kraken's ability to adapt and operate very differently to just a swarming hammer blow certainly unsettled the rest of the Imperium, and they knew that the Tyranids could learn from them. In battle, the Tyranids of High Fleet Kraken favour speed, infiltration tactics, and destabilising the foe at every turn. Many Lictors, Gene Stealers, and Vanguard organisms typically operate within their ranks, and there was one particular prototype Ravener called the Red Terror. It was a scourge of one entire world, undermining the defenders and slaughtering bunkers full of entrenched troops at every turn. I feel like with their emphasis on speed and subtlety, the Vanguard Onslaught fits them really quite well as the new Tyranid Codex detachments. Quite a nice one for Gene Stealers and Lictors and things, and really favour lightning fast assault tactics. Their core buff is Advance and Charge, which I think fits with Kraken really quite well. They've certainly been famed in the past for lightning fast Gene Stealer strikes that can jump from basically one side of the board to the other. That's not really changed with this one, as you could certainly scout Gene Stealers forward and then pretty much guarantee a first turn charge with the Advance and Charge thing. Potentially with help with a whole load of other things that are setting up in the midfield as well. The Vanguard Onslaught's got lots of very powerful stratagems and enhancements as well. Things to deploy close to shield a unit from enemy shooting or reactively move away from enemies moving towards you. Lots of really big things there. Plus ways to mess with enemy reserves to get stealth or cover for your units and redeploy units that have started out front with the neuro node. Their enhancements are rather good as well. I say this is probably one of the strongest Tyranid formations at the moment. Could definitely seem to do crack and proud with all the sneaky tricks. Rounding off perhaps the big three Tyranid Hive Fleets, there's Hive Fleet Leviathan. This one kind of feeling like the endgame boss of the Tyranids, an enormous Hive Fleet dwarfing others that came before it, striking with a very broad fronted attack from below the galactic plane, and clearly having learned a lot from the previous incursions of the Tyranids into the galaxy, making full use of stealth tactics, raw might when needed, and striking with units from the sky, land, and burrowing beneath it. Inquisitor Cryptsman recognised the severity of the threat, establishing a cordon and either evacuating or destroying many worlds in the dead zone, or to deny pressured biomass to the Tyranids and take some enormous sacrifices to stop the entire Imperium from being overrun. Since then, the Tyranids of Leviathan certainly have been very busy, the Orcs of Octavius, and begun a huge conflict with the Tyranids that ultimately seemed to end with the Tyranids triumphant over the Greenskins. Bar was very nearly overrun by the Leviathan, hemming back the Blood Angels and their successor chapters, though this was ultimately thwarted by the Deus Ex Machina intervention of Cabanda the Bloodthirster. And now, of course, in the new lore of 10th edition, the Fourth Tyrannic War is underway, Leviathan showing its colossal reach and striking from the entire western side of the galaxy, again making once more towards Holy Terror, and perhaps showing the Imperium that the threat is on all sides, Tyranid fleets closing in both in the Galactic East and Galactic West as well. It seems that they've currently been stopped and ground to a stalemate behind the Imperial Defenders. I guess we'll have to see if anything further happens as a resolution to the conflict from Games Workshop going forward. In Battle of Athen, it is pretty much the ultimate threat. Combined sophisticated assault patterns from air, ground and below it with a powerful synaptic command. The Swarm Lord itself is perhaps particularly associated with Leviathan, often spawned by the Hive Mind as a stress mechanic as an ultimate commander to assert direct control over one particularly critical field of war. To represent Leviathan in game, I feel like the Invasion Fleet fits fairly well with their lore. I think it does really quite well to represent combined armed Tyranids that can adapt to the foe at hand, getting damage buffs against infantry, vehicles, or characters, depending on which one you choose at the start of the game. It's really quite nice against knights and skew lists like that. Otherwise, they've got quite a nice powerful stratagem with 5 plus feel no pain, which can often be dished out by hive tyrants, and some nice enhancements allowing early game redeploys, or an enhancement that makes one hive tyrant particularly hard to kill. Quite a lot of good stuff to light there, and easy direct benefits to damage and defence. Otherwise, I guess perhaps the Synaptic Nexus could be an interesting pick for Leviathan as well. They do like their Synapse and Command organisms. I'll talk about them with a later Hive Fleet though. In any case, I'd rate the Invasion Fleet as a fairly powerful Tyranid detachment, probably one of the stronger ones. Moving on, we've got the black and yellow crested Tyranids of Hive Fleet Jormungandr, named after a Norse Great Worm. And this Hive Fleet is one that was thought to be wiped out by the Imperium, 
only to find out that their general game plan tends to be to lurk deep within the planet's surface and implant burrowing nests of ravenous trigons and morlocks that emerge to devour the enemy, when the world has long thought it has been safe for a long time. Even worlds that have been particularly thoroughly cleansed and thought to have been free of the taint rise again once more with burrowing beasts, an infestation that's truly difficult to wipe out. In battle, your Manganda might often employ infested orbital debris hurled at the planet from space to infest it from above. Then the burrowing organisms might infest a planet burrowing under fortifications and arising to strike the defenders from within, great swarms worth of lesser bogs burrowing out from tunnels excavated by trigons. In game, I maybe feel like your Manganda is one that isn't really quite so directly well served by any one detachment. I'm perhaps kind of surprised they didn't have one flavour of detachment themed around burrowing tyranids a little bit, as it does seem to be one of their archetypes, though I suppose it does only apply to a subset of their models. A fair few of the detachments just don't really help out with the Ravenous, Morlocks or Trigons all that much, so you might just be better off sticking with the trusty invasion fleet there and have them hyper-adapt to exactly what they need to fight. I do kind of feel like these borrowers maybe could have been given the Harvester keywords to help them consume the enemy, and could have played into that assimilation swarm, but it seems that Games Workshop's chosen not to go down that route. Next up we've got the swarms of High Fleet Hydra, perhaps a slightly curious and unsettling High Fleet that follows in the wake of the Leviathan, absorbing small splintered High Fleets and taking them under its wing, consuming its genetic memory to ever learn more and further the evolution of their Tyranids, and compared with many, they will often feed on weakened survivors that have thought that they were safe from a previous high fleet, or even devoured damaged Tyranid forces, attacking and parasiting remnants of larger high fleets to take their biomass for their cause. These black and purplish carapace Tyranids typically employ swarms of lesser bioforms overrunning the enemy. Their attacks will typically be enormous wars of attrition, with many waves of termagants, hormigaunts and gargoyles overrunning enemy positions, often until all ammunition is exhausted often exacerbated by their preference to prey on weakened worlds that are weary from combat. For the focus of the swarming Tyranids, it's kind of hard to talk about anything other than the unending swarm detachment. That's the one that's got lots of support for hordes of gaunts. The detachment rule is that if the enemy shoots the gaunts and you take a casualty, then you get to move up d6 inches towards their forces should you wish to. I feel like it's quite a nice benefit, though maybe works a lot better for Hormagaunts that might actually want to be in combat a bit more than, say, Termagants or Gargoyles. Could definitely still be handy in the right circumstances, though, if you're just trying to mob an enemy unit and slow it down. I feel like their stratagem support for the Hordes, though, is really quite good. There's a good damage dealing one with sustained hits and criticals on a 5+. Plus. Very nice for Termagants near a Tervagon. Respawning entire units to throw in 20 more bodies to the fight for 2 CP and some nice defensive ones for a minus one to hit or protection against blasts, which can be pretty vicious when you've got loads of bodies in a unit. Overall, I think I'd make this detachment around about medium power. Could definitely catch some armies off guard that's gone a bit too heavy on anti-tank. I feel like Gaunt Hordes are usually going to struggle for damage output, though. You probably would still need to back them up with some mainline damage dealers to actually do some heavy lifting and destroy parts of the opponent's army. Otherwise, you could maybe try and run them as an assimilation swarm, it could be quite nice given that they like to harvest weakened high fleets and weaker defenders. Does seem kind of hard to pass up a hordy army for an army that's all about hordes though. Next up we have the shadowy high fleet of High Fleet Kronos, which has been theorised by the Imperium to be the hive mind's adaptation to consuming worlds that are corrupted by chaos. The high fleet seems to show a preference for hunting demons, psychic beacons and chaos worshippers, sometimes to the point of turning up to a fight and ignoring Imperial forces, purely going after the forces of chaos that are misusing the warp in some way. In battle, to consume and harvest their somewhat otherworldly prey, the Tyranids of High Fleet Kronos employ great psychers themselves, and have an enormous presence of the shadow in the warp to cut all connection with the Empyrean from the foes that they hunt. They also tend to prefer ranged combat somewhat over melee, kind of unusual for the Tyranids, and typically have a whole bunch of Zonthropes and Neurothropes, Exocrines, Biovores and Termagants within their ranks. With their ranged firepower and their particularly powerful psychers, I feel like the Synaptic Nexus is a fairly good fit for them. Maybe not perfect as some of its Synapse buffs are quite good for getting into combat as opposed to shooting, but it definitely encourages a whole bunch of Alpha Leader Psyker bugs. And a bunch of other things seem to fit the theme really quite well. They've got a stratagem called Smothering Shadow for big mortal wound damage if you fail a Battleshock nearby a Synapse organism. They've got a stratagem to allow you to fall back and shoot which is very helpful for gun lines 
and Irresistible Will is a stratagem that gives you some big re-rolls for a firebase nearby your leader bog, or focusing down one threat. That could be very nice for a small choir of zonethropes obliterating the enemy with psychic firepower. You also do get a super strong Neurotyrant as well, which is pretty fun. Better psychic damage for 10 points with strength 6 and AP minus 2 psychic flames. Overall, I'd rate the detachment as a pretty strong one overall. Fairly good stratagems for buffing a lot of shooting units, and some of the core buffs really help some of the melee things get to combat when they need to. Finally, for the major high fleets, we've got High Fleet Gorgon. These are particularly known for being long standing enemies of the Tau Empire, striking on the eastern fringe and tending to employ a large amount of venomous tyranids, particularly famed for their gargoyles and their blinding venom. They also have toxicrins, venom thropes, and all manner of other tyranids sporting abnormal toxin sacs. These venoms are highly adaptable to the foe that they fight, and they will change them per battle that they have. Their brood progenitors developing poisons that can kill their foes in instance. The High Fleet did take some major losses after they were beaten back with an alliance between the Imperium and Tau, but never truly destroyed, and continue to be a menace in that sector of space to this day. For this one, I probably would say that the detachment that they have maybe isn't as super obvious as some of the rest again. Could probably justify several of them from a lore point of view. I feel like, again, maybe just the standard invasion swarm might be a pretty reasonable one. I think that the way that they adapt to their foe and then cause damage based on what they're attacking is kind of reminiscent of their venoms. Maybe some metallotoxins to take down vehicles, and that could represent the lethal hits, for example. Otherwise, I guess unending swarm or vanguard invaders could be quite nice for wanting hordes of gargoyles if you want to go down that signature flying beastie route. Of course, there's plenty of other high fleets in the lore, just a couple of high fleet Tiamat, a high fleet that doesn't strip planets bare for once, but instead protects verdant worlds, slowly building itself a great bioconstruct of very uncertain provenance. Some in the Imperium are concerned that this might be a great beacon to draw yet more tyrannids to the galaxy like moths to a flame. Another particularly interesting one is High Fleet Ouroboros, thought to be perhaps the first ever Tyranids encountered by the Imperium of Man, arrived into the galaxy long before the main arrival of High Fleet Behemoth, arriving into the galaxy and just thought to be strange beasts and a truly unnatural form of Xenos. They tend to strike with great winged flying swarms with lots of gargoyles and harpies, ancient primordial Tyranids that many weapons and tactics designed to counter modern Tyranids don't work as well against as you might think. Finally, and seeing as we haven't talked about the detachment yet, I thought I'd just mention the Assimilation Swarm as well. I feel like that one maybe doesn't lend itself as much to any one of the high fleets, though it could basically represent any of them devouring a planet once the main fight has been done. The gameplay focuses around harvester organisms such as rippers, psychophages, harrispexes and pyrovores to hold objectives and heal nearby units from the biomass that they're busy consuming. I think they do have some fun choices as well. I do quite like the one where if you kill one of their harvester organisms, the rest of the swarm gets very angry and you get plus one to wound against that target for the rest of the game. That is really quite a big boost. Though I might rate this swarm as just being a little bit weaker than some of the others. The game plays maybe just a little bit unusual and dependent on just a few key organisms that you don't have much choice over. And even when activated, healing D3 wounds on a unit is okay, but maybe not make or break compared with some of the other benefits you can get. In any case, it's been good fun to talk through a bunch of classifications of Xenos once more. Let me know in the comments which high fleet your Tyranids hail from, or which ones you might be thinking of choosing, which one out of these is the coolest, or works best with your battle tactics. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day, and I'm sure we'll have more for the Tyranids in the future. Finally, if you'd like to support the channel and keep these videos coming, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.